Jose, 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 Jose. I used to have a friend named Jose, and then every time me and my friends saw him, we would be like, Jose! I'm glad he wasn't one of these guys. Anyways, guys, enough of my singing. Let us grab a blanket. Turn off your lights for true scary stories that happen with Jose. <laughs> Crazy Jose. This is not really scary like some of the other posts, but it's still pretty messed up nonetheless. This series of events happened when I was about 10 years old. My mom was friends with a guy named Jose. All I knew at the time about Jose was he was marine in his 20s. He was cool at first until the following events happened. One day, my mom decided to drink with some friends and the neighbors, and my mom happened to have too much to drink. My mom ends up going inside her house and passes out. Knowing my mom went outside to pass out, Jose tries to break in and force his way into our house. Now looking back, he probably saw this as an opportunity to take advantage of my drunk mom. And it took both me and my brother to push this fucker out of the house and lock all the doors and windows. For the next 30 minutes, me and my brother were super scared while he ran around the house banging on the doors and windows trying to get inside. A few weeks later, my mom comes home really shaken and with a look of terror on her face. She told us about being invited to go see a movie with Jose. While at the movies, Jose proclaimed his undying love for my mom and how he was obsessed and could not live without her and he and kept trying to convince her to leave my dad and if she didn't, he would kill himself. This made my mom uncomfortable so she told him to excuse her to go to the bathroom. When she got out the bathroom, Jose was riding outside. Jose was waiting right outside the bathroom door, and that is when she decided to be honest and told him she was uncomfortable with the whole situation, and she had called a friend to pick her up and she was leaving. Angry, Jose chased her all around the parking lot, and eventually the street, yelling like a madman, until my mom's friend showed up in time, right before he caught up to her, and was able to escape his rage. Every day for months after, this man left long letters in our mailbox, apologizing and proclaiming his love. He would even go as far as putting roses all over my mom's car in the middle of the night for us to see the next day. He, w he even went as far as harassing me and my brother on MySpace. Luckily, after he moved, the letters and all this madness stopped. After all these events, he was dubbed Crazy Jose for his creepy antics. Crazy Jose, you really do need help. Your behavior is very dangerous and toxic. Crazy Jose, I pray to God we never meet again. How the police ended up in my apartment at 5 a.m. So before I start, let me preface this story with the layout of my apartment. There are four rooms and a living space, with a door that goes out into a small hallway, which leads to another door which goes outside. All the apartments are built the same, and have the same furniture as well. So, last night, it, it's around 5 o'clock AM, and I hear a buzzing at my door. I figure it's just my friend messing with me, and so after it rings about a dozen times, I get up, and go to the door to see what's happening. Now, there is a hallway that separates my door from another door which is how you get inside the house. So I open my door, and as soon as I do, a 6'4 man rips open the door which must have been ajar from one of the other people in my complex, and comes to the little crack of my door. I have open and shouts, My name is Jose, this is my apartment, I'm tired and I just want to chill. His eyes are extremely, extremely dilated, as if he were on every drug known to mankind. When I've refused his entry into my home, he turns around and as I'm closing the door, full sprints into the apartment. So this man starts screaming that this is his stuff, because he has the same TV, he has the same couch. I try to reason with him and explain that everyone has the stuff, it's just like a fucking TV and like remote controllers and all that, but he calls me a liar at that moment and says he'll show me, so he goes to my friend's room, which I'm assuming is what room he has in his actual apartment, and opens the door to my friend having sex with his girlfriend. He becomes furious, shouting at the girl saying, Courtney, how could you? Her name is fucking Sarah, 
so my friend gets up and tackles the guy, where he lays until the police arrive, shouting over and over that his name is Jose, and that he's just trying to chill. They ask him where his shoes went, since it's snowing outside, and he says, they're, they're in his jacket, but he, he didn't even have a jacket. And why would shoes be in a jacket? Can it even fit in there? Regardless, that's really besides the point. So they asked him what his last name was, which he spelled out normally at first, but kept ending it with J-O-S-E, Jose. <laughs> he then accused the officer of bullying and whipped out a cig from thin air and began blowing, blowing cigarette smoke in his face. He was detained and I haven't seen him since. Moral of the story is, don't do drugs, kids. And to Jose, if you're out there, let's not chill. And definitely, let's not meet. Creepy Cartel Dude it's 4.30 a.m., let's do this. It's a bit of a read because I ramble. So, first things first, some background. My mom was a pimp for a cartel. That's the main reason I even was exposed to this guy. My mom was a petite blonde woman who looked exactly like a soccer mom. We don't know when she began to work for them or how she got involved with them exactly, but we do live in a cartel town on the Mexican border. So it isn't completely out of the blue. My older sister's godmother's father was a big name drug lord in the 80s in the Gulf Cartel. And almost everyone around here either works for them, indirectly or directly, or knows someone who does. We also have some Zetas here and there as well. But as we're literally across the border from the Matamoros, we get Gulf more. That's just the culture here. Now, the let's not meet again encounter begins with my mom's co-worker. Jose. He was just fucking creepy. Now when he started showing up, my sister and I had no clue our mom was involved in the cartel. She did a good job of keeping it from us up until this point. I was around 11 when he started showing up. I've always been a really good judge of character, like a fucking dog, so I immediately didn't like him. My sister thought I was being paranoid about the whole situation, but as he came around more and more and more, she started feeling it more as well. Eventually, he started dating my mom. I say dating, but it's more like he started owning her. She became a different woman, but it was clear she did the best to keep him away from my sister and I still. He had eyes for us. When I was 13 years old, he became engaged to my mother. Now, something you need to understand is that where we live, white people make up like 1% of the population. So my mom and sister, blonde with blue eyes, were pretty much always the center of attention anywhere we went. I was pretty white too, and as a result of how rare we were down there. In school, my sister and I were used to getting hit on pretty much 24-7. Unfortunately, this ended up happening at home too. This man was constantly creeping on my sister. He would touch her shoulders and massage them like completely creepy behavior, you know? My sister is about two years older than me, and she started leaving the house a lot to avoid him and his touching. She pretty much holed herself up at school, friends' houses, or church, leaving me to deal with him. He didn't even seem to realize I existed until I got a growth spurt. I, I was always a techie kid, so he started trying to talk to me about tech stuff. He figured out I knew how to reset laptops and stuff in case people forgot their passwords or something like that. I did it for a couple of older folks here and there. He started showing up with laptops, asking me to reset them. I immediately realized that they were stolen laptops, but I reset them anyways. He gave me money for doing it, and I didn't know the people who stole them from. So, in my mind, I didn't care. After this had gone on for a while, he started doing the creepy massage thing to me and telling me how my mom and my sister were like identical to each other. But I was different. I was the black sheep. But I was more like a classical Spanish beautiful. And all this other creepy shit about my skin being soft too. I pretty much noped out of that and started doing the stay locked in my room thing too. 
My mom, meanwhile, was constantly at work or her work thing. He eventually moved in, which is when I started sleeping with a kitchen knife under my pillow. He was never able to safely come to my room or my sister's room because our dogs, both of them, a tiny vicious corgi and a 70 pound pit bull, both friggin hated him and they slept with us. He had tried coming into my room once at night when I was asleep and the dogs pretty much chased him out. He claimed he was going to talk to me at 3 a.m. in the morning on a school night when I was already asleep. And anytime he mentioned wanting to get rid of the dogs, my sister and I both pretty much immediately changed the subject. Now, we're not stupid. We knew he might try something to get rid of them. We worried he hurt the dogs or take them to the shelter all the time. We even had our neighbor watch the dogs in his yard during the daytime to make sure he didn't do anything sketchy to them. We told him that the dogs wanted to play with his, and he seemed to suspect something, but he never pushed and let us leave them with him. He was a cool guy. His boyfriend and him liked grooming them too. I'm thankful we were able to keep the dogs from him. I'd hate to think what would have happened if they weren't there at night. So, he kept trying to approach me, and I kept avoiding him. He started saying he wanted to take me somewhere private on his motorcycle, and the more he pushed, the more I refused. I kept refusing. At this point, my sister had pretty much dropped from his radar all completely. He was 100,000% zoned in on me. I don't even think he noticed my mom too often either, as I kept pushing and pretty much dodging his advances. My mom started getting mysterious bruises. I know if he took out his frustrations on her, but it sure felt like it. When I started ninth grade, the harassment kicked up a notch, like seriously fucking kicked up. I was in FFA, and we had a barn at my school where we kept animals for rodeos and stuff like that. I, I love this barn, to be honest. I had my own goat, and I was always the first kid there. Jose knew I loved these animals. He also knew I was always the first one there, around 7 a.m. in the morning every single day. He knew I'd find them. There had been 11 goats. He kicked two of them to death, sliced up four, and mixed rat poison in with all the goats' feed. We didn't find out about the feet until we lost two more. How did I know it was him? I decided not to go to school that day. When I got home, he was there asking if I was okay. He was acting super nice and concerned. But I immediately just got my dogs and locked myself in my room. I hadn't even told my mom about what happened yet. And the cops didn't even know who I was. I literally just reported it to the teacher and ran, ran home, ran back home. No one else knew what had happened except for a senior and the teacher. There was no way he would have known what had happened. The senior did not have a cell phone, and the teacher was still dealing with the police when I had left. I thought about, like, what if the school had called home and let him know what had happened? But the principal hadn't even gone to the school yet when I left. The only adults on campus had been the cops, my teachers, and maybe a few stray teachers or janitor staff. What really made it clear was... When he mentioned details about it, he couldn't possibly have friggin' known, like how the organs from the Slash Goats were arranged. So yeah, at this point, I was at 100% danger mode. 14 year old me even started researching curses to chase him away and protect myself online. The school was trying to cover up the barn attacks as wild dog attacks, because it looked bad if the supposedly secured campus had something so bad happen. So none of the teachers, the people who I was supposedly able to talk to, were able to help me at risk of their jobs. The school's principal was really big on trying to make the school nationally recognized, and goat murders were definitely not in the cards for that. It didn't help that the principal had used money meant for security cameras on something else, so she was desperate to hide the fact that there was no footage of the incident. Meanwhile, my mother was never home, my grandparents were over six hours away, and didn't believe me. The police never responded to the report I filed. At this point, every adult in my life who I was supposed to be able to rely on was practically, practically ignoring me. Meanwhile, Jose continued advances. I was literally overwhelmed myself with school activities to make sure I was never home, like my sister had done before me. 
I was in theater, I was in JROTC, I was in art club, I was in digital design club, and, and, and I was in more, just, just to make sure I got to school early and left late. I was literally driving myself insane to keep myself too busy to be bothered, but I was also afraid. I kept these clubs around me, invited them to my house, constantly. It was an attempt to show him, see? I have these people here. If something happens to me, they'll notice. I was stupidly trying to prove that if he did anything to me, it'd be obvious. There, that big gaping hole would appear in the school, and all the alarms would go up about the situation. And the goat thing, I was terrified of him. But no one I should have been able to rely on would help me, even after that incident. Luckily, he, he was arrested near the end of my freshman year. My mom was arrested too. I never saw him again after that. I think he's still in jail, but I don't really know. While the adults tried their best to keep what had happened from me, I was able to look everything up, since news stories love this. You know what finally, you know what, you, you know what finally got him arrested? <laughs> One of my mom's prostitutes was caught, and she gave him and my mom up. To add to the pile of fear, I found out he may have been involved in kidnappings of Texas girls to Mexico. So mom later told me that he used to threaten to have my sister or I taken to Mexico, or that he'd attack us to control her. So he never actually attacked my sister and I beyond his harassment because of whatever my mom did behind the scenes. She, she never told me the full, full story. I've since moved from the town and my sister's changed her last name but I still sleep with a knife, and now again, in case Jose decides to come back. But really, really, <laughs> let's not meet again.